distribution through their city councils. The city of Grenoble managed its own water for over a century, providing good quality water at low prices to consumers. Suez bribed our mayor. Le maire de Grenoble a choisi de privatiser à Lyonnaise des Eaux Suez. Tous les services publics sont bien moins chers que les services privatisés. There hasn't been one example in the world where there hasn't been a hike in 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 the water rates. Il n'y avait aucune raison logique de privatiser ce service qui marchait très bien. Sa décision de privatisation était en échange d'avantages personnels avait acheté le maire de Grenoble. I'm not a big fan of government control on a lot of stuff. I've been in government. I've worked in the federal government, I worked in state government, I worked in local government and I see an extraordinary amount of corruption. Right now we have a number of uh, state senators that have just been indicted in Alaska for corruption dealing with the oil industry. But what what was the amount of corruption? A few thousand dollars. It's not the money, it's the power. Not many people know that prior to being president, Vicente Fox was the general manager for Coca-Cola in Latin America. So Coca-Cola received some of the largest water concessions in Mexico during the Fox administration. And this is something that really needs to be opened up for serious debate. People do not realize the extent to which there is a direct giveaway on the part of governments of water resources and services to industries locating in their jurisdiction. Well, I want to be very clear about the situation in Mexico that, that President Vicente Fox has given us no special favors on water issues or anything else along that line. The largest water concession given by the government in the whole country was to a Coca-Cola bottling plant. It takes as much water as it wants. You could say that Coca-Cola ruled Mexico. If you really look at the, uh, at the controversy of whether water should be owned privately or water should be owned publicly, uh, you, I see abuses on both sides. When water is only owned by the government, you have an opportunity for abuse. When a water is jointly owned by someone who has a capital interest, a private interest, a profit interest, and government, you have a partnership that tends to balance those things out. The new face of colonialism comes in the form of Coca-Cola. You walk anywhere in Africa and it's Coca-Cola water. You cannot get anything but, you cannot drink the water out of the tap, you can't even find purifiers. You are an absolute slave to this company. Dasani is not meant to be a substitute for municipal supply, so we are absolutely in support of robust, comprehensible, and equitable water and sanitation systems. In this country, you have to pay more for this water than you pay for the same amount of Coca-Cola. So that, that's something. Dasani is in plastic bottles, and Coca-Cola are in glass bottles. Now, when you look at uh, the, the price difference, what you're looking at is that the cost of, of producing those bottles is much higher. We have looked at, in the past, of bottling Dasani in the glass, but uh, the plastic package is becoming very popular now, and what we're looking at is what the customers want. As you look at new, new ways to develop business, you look at also what the customer wants and needs are. The situation with the cost of Dasani is more about the packaging. And also, plastic bottles are taxed at a higher rate than glass bottles. per se understands in 50 years this is the commodity to be invested in. There's a sunset out there, there's a horizon out there that's coming closer and closer for oil, but not for water. There are at least a dozen publicly traded water indexes that deal only with water, trading it on the open stock market. Five years ago, this didn't exist. 
Now it's just simply exploding. It takes uh, two players to really make the corruption happen. Uh, first of all, we have uh, corporations who are often greedy, but corporations are not uh, social service agencies. They're there to make a profit. And what happens too often is that the water hunters are able to come in and either the government is corrupt or the laws are not sufficient to protect the water resources. As a water hunter, you just go out and you try to find a water source. It's not going to cost you a lot of money to clean up. The problem is getting it and holding on to it. Canada had 12 contracts for the bulk export of water and arbitrarily with the change of government in British Columbia, canceled those contracts. When you have a change in government, the previous government's commitments are subject to renegotiation. And that's just the way it is. So when you're looking at water owned by someone else that you have to get a contract with, that's not a secure commodity anymore. The only way to have a secure commodity is to create it yourself by desalinization. Many do not see the harm in depending on desalination for our future water needs. And suddenly many countries in the world are looking to desal and building new desal plants as the alternative and this is going to save them. But to do that we require a great deal of fossil fuels and burning of fossil fuels which contributes to global warming which in turn contributes to the climate change problem in general. Uh, in order to address one problem we end up creating a new problem. We already have an energy shortage. Where are we going to get the energy to use desalination? And a, a lot of corporations are saying nuclear technologies. Well, nuclear technologies are really not viable. We have no current plan to deal with nuclear waste. You know, it's no different from saying to ourselves that we're going to go into space after making a mess out of this planet. We go into Mars, we relocate there, or we colonize space itself and colonize another planet. And having made a mess out of our own situation, having failed to live up to our own responsibilities in relationship to nature, we then move on to destroy another piece of nature and leave the mess behind. The fact that there aren't more plants in the world is because it's a cost factor. Only rich countries or the World Bank or big corporations or a combination of all three are going to be able to afford to, to build desalination plants. But even on the slim chance that technology can advance quickly enough, that the energy costs and needs lower enough to make a global desalination solution possible, the question still remains, why? Why forfeit the water we already currently have? Why freely give it to others only so they can sell it back to us at whatever cost the demand allows? When you have communities that are looking to extend their water supplies, they'll pay what they feel the value of that supply is worth. There are 87 corporations now building desalination plants, and the biggest water company of all is General Electric followed by Procter & Gamble and Dow Chemicals getting into it. These are all companies that have seen the writing on the wall. And the writing on the wall is that water is the hottest property out there. I think you can add a 15% on that. I think if 15% is responsible, some investors will require 30. Uh, and if you can't offer 30, they're not interested in investing. What we actually have is that these big corporations are going to profit from dirty water. So they don't want to see the, the pollutants not going into the water in the first place. They want to have a, uh, a model where they can step in and provide very expensive technologies to clean up pollution after it occurs. I wondered when I looked at the UN Millennium Goals why they didn't include goals around pollution and cracking down on the fact that if you can't use the rivers and lakes in your area then you're forced to mine groundwater. Well it's as clear as a bell to me now. It's because they're raking in the money. Who's going to own that?